Parents, adjusting to remote learning has been a challenge, and not only for you or for your kids, but for teachers as well. Yeah, and a lot of folks asking, hey, what's next school year going to look like? Well, this morning we've got State Superintendent Joy Hoffmeister joining us to answer all your questions. And Joy, thanks for joining us this morning. How are you doing? You guys staying safe? Thank you very much. Yes, we are. And uh, it's great to see both of you, Keith and Sonny. Well, good to see you. And again, thank you, Joy, for joining us. Uh, the first question uh, concerns uh, classes ongoing now or the uh, distance learning. How is it going? Do you feel pretty satisfied with the way things have happened so far? Well, this was a very quick rollout and it was really about re-engaging and connecting with our students and doing our very best with a very uh, short window to get distance window, um, learning up and running. Uh, but it is not um, in any way what we would have wanted had we had more time to prepare. Now is the time to prepare for next year. And so we're focusing on connectivity for all students. We are certainly hoping that the new school year will be able to roll in uh, as a normal year, but the likelihood of the need for con continued distance learning in areas or at different times may be a very uh, real reality for some of our students. So connectivity is key for helping all students have the opportunity to be a part of meaningful instruction going forward. Okay. Very different process opening the school year. Okay, so speaking of that, opening the school year, what's going to happen with the students who, let's say, had poor connectivity or were not really able to, to work with teachers the way that they had tried to? Those students that have fallen behind, how is that going to impact them as they go into the fall? I think we have to be very honest. We can't sugarcoat this. There are many students who have lost ground. Uh, so what we are doing is working with our district leaders, various um, organizations and groups that support students to focus on recovery of unfinished learning, recovery of any kind of learning loss that we know is there. And to do that, it's going to take the connectivity that we were just speaking about. So our focus is to take relief dollars that are coming to the state and invest that in the internet connectivity in homes, uh, ways to have increased broadband so that our kids can keep up in a more uniform way across the state. But we have a lot of work to do and we're preparing for different scenarios throughout the year. Yeah, start today talking about the different scenarios, pretty fluid situation. Things are literally changing by the week. Uh, how much of listening to teachers or listening to parents goes into choosing which option is going to ultimately work? Well, actually, COVID-19 will be the decider. Uh, we know that the way we enter the school year will have a lot to do with what happens in the next few weeks as we see social distancing continuing, but more interaction as people come out uh, to be a part of restaurants and um, those businesses that they normally would frequent. Uh, but as we see the new year rolling in, we have to be prepared for scenarios that might include quarantine for a class. Um, but maybe not an entire district-wide shutdown, uh, where we could be more fluid in the moving um, from a traditional class, um, knowing that we have also the need to just do things differently in the school. In other words, if you have music, let's not let's have the teacher come to the classroom and keep kids in that classroom and more isolated instead of everyone in the school moving in and out of one classroom for music. That's one example, but there are things we can do in the way we operate school to minimize the spread of COVID. All right, a lot of tough decisions still to be made, but Joy, thank you so very much for taking the time to talk with us this morning and continued uh, safety for you and your family. Thank you. All right, still to